Hey guys, Mason Storm here. And in this video, I'm going to walk you through how to open up a College 529 account. These are state accounts, and so each state will have their own website. I'm from Indiana, so we're gonna spend the most time in the College 529 for Indiana, but I will take you to a couple others and show you how easy it is to find them. And so by the end of this video, you'll hopefully feel empowered to open up a 529 account, regardless of what state you're in. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna shift this slightly so that you can see my screen and then I will let you know what we're doing. So here is the Indiana College Choice 529. To get here, all I did was, I just typed in College 529 Indiana and it was the first thing that pulled up. And so I click on it and here I am. Did the same thing for Ohio. You'll notice here I typed in College 529 Ohio and then I see my first option is College Advantage. And so I'm gonna click on that. Same thing with Missouri. Typed in College 529 Missouri. First thing that popped up. So I think we can conclude from this, no matter where you're located, if you type in College 529 followed by your state, you should pull it up as one of the first one or two items in your search. If we look at the Missouri one, we'll see that the logons in the top right, open an accounts just to the left of that. We go to the Ohio one, we see that open an accounts in the top right, count login if you've already got ones just below that. And then on the 529, the enroll now to open an account is right in the center. And then we've got a login if you've already got an account up in the top right. So really easy to figure out where to go. We're going to click on this enroll now and see what we need. So we need address, date of birth, social security number, all common when you're opening up some sort of financial account. About the successor, it's going to ask who's going to be in charge of this in the event of your death or inability. Keep in mind that the account owner and the account beneficiary can be the same, but they're often not. So I'm the account owner on all the 529 plans for my family, but I have had a 529 sub account for my wife, myself, and our two boys. So we have a main 529 account and then we have four sub accounts within that account. I'm the owner on all of them, but I'm the beneficiary on only one, because on two of them, it's my boys, the other one is my wife. So that's the key with those two things, is you're gonna label a beneficiary, the person for whom you're saving, and then you're gonna list an account owner, basically the one making decisions for that account. We then see about your investments. You'll have options on how to invest it. You can do everything from putting it in a savings account to putting it in the stock market, to putting it in bonds, lots of options, international, domestic, et cetera. I know that exists with Indiana. I'm gonna assume you're gonna have that many options in most of the states. About your bank, you're gonna to have to put in your account information, your routing number, so that you can make contributions to the account. If uh, you don't wanna do that, I think a lot of the College 529s are gonna let you open an account without getting that information right away would be my assumption. And so that'll be pretty easy though to navigate as you start the account. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna log in to my 529 so that you can see some of what happens once you're already logged in. I am gonna turn the screen for just a second so that you can't see my login. Let's see here, type that in, login. We're gonna type in our username and then our password. Click on that, click on that, okay. All right, and so you'll notice that we're logged in now. We have a 529 that also has four sub accounts. You'll see that I'm listed, my wife's listed, and my two boys are listed. And then you'll notice, well, I've only got a penny in my account. And the reason why I've only got a penny in my account is because if you draw it down to zero, it'll actually close itself. And so we've closed my wife's because she's done with her education. 
but I'm not 100% sure that I'm done with my education. And so because of that, I keep a penny in it so that my sub account stays active and I don't have to open a new account if I all of a sudden have some education expenses related to myself. And then our boys have a little bit more in their accounts. Not a lot because they're just one in three, but we've begun saving for their college. And so they're going to have the largest accounts right now. And like I said, the only reason I keep a penny in mind is to keep it open. We then see this section up here where it talks about features and benefits, federal and state tax benefits is going to tell you about what those are. You gift is an area you go where you can actually get information on how to send a link uh, to your relatives or friends for them to make contributions to your 529 account. Really easy around Christmas time or birthdays, maybe you make a request to the grandparents to make a 529 contribution in lieu of one more toy because your house is already cluttered with them. And so different features and benefits here that you can walk through investment options. If we click on, for instance, individual portfolios, you'll notice we come down here and we see that we've got an international portfolio option with Dodge and Cox. We've got an active bond portfolio, a savings portfolio. We've got about three different ones with Vanguard and then a dimensional one. So let's click on this Vanguard one. And this is actually gonna pull up a lot of different options from, it actually opened up all of those different options. And so the first ones are age specific. So they're like a target date retirement fund. If some of you are familiar with those options, perhaps in your employer's 401k or 403b. And this would be, for instance, I think my child's gonna to go to college in 2036 or around there. That's probably since they're spread by three years. I'm not currently invested in those, but I think they're probably saying if, when your child starts. So if your child's gonna start in 2036 or 2033 or 2030, and you just pick the one that's closest. If you think about it, 2021, you're one year out. I have not actually seen college portfolio before. I'm going to guess that that is they're actually in college. And so it's going to be extremely conservative uh, compared to like this 2036 where you've got a lot of time on your hands. We've got an equity index. So stock markets. We've got international portfolio, we've got an active bond portfolio, savings portfolio, a couple others. So let's click on this US equity index portfolio and you'll see this is how much each share cost that you buy of it. And then this is just talking about change and then this is expense ratio. And so this is how much you're paying to have this 0.2%. So much lower, for instance, than if you're hiring a financial advisor that's going to charge you quite a bit more than 0.2%. Talks about the inception date or the start date of this fund, an investment strategy. So what is this? The portfolio invests all of its assets in the Vanguard Institutional Total Stock Market Index Fund. So a lot of you are probably familiar with the S&P 500. And the total stock market index fund for Vanguard actually tracks over, say, like a 10 year period, very similar to the S&P 500. So the S&P 500 is going to be made up of large cap stocks, where if you notice this total stock market one, it's made up of large, mid, small and micro cap stocks. Cap refers to capitalization. So it's the capitalization of the company, how much is the company worth? And so the large, as you can imagine, it's the biggest companies, micro are the smallest. So the total stock market's investing in businesses in a broad range of size, where S&P 500's focus more on larger businesses. But ironically, over 10, 20 years, you're not gonna see that much of a difference between this fund and the S&P 500. So if you really wanted to, for instance, be in an S&P 500 index, go ahead and just put your money in this one. And you know, I'm not a financial advisor, but I've been invested in both of these index funds. And I can tell you that historically, their returns are very similar. And so 
it's going to be the closest thing by far that you have as far as options, at least on this one, to achieving that objective. And then we see, okay, some planning options, benefits of savings, goal setting, 529 MIFs. We've got an outreach section. We've got a manage account section that's got the account, the contact us button. So pretty easy to navigate, as you can see as we go through here. So hopefully you found this video helpful. Have a great night.